today I want to talk about our experiences teaching during COVID, where we had online classes and then hybrid courses. And in this talk, I'm going to focus on hybrid courses where some of the students are live in person and some of them are attending courses remotely. We had, of course, many courses in our college that have this hybrid approach, but today I'm going to talk about one specific example a graduate software engineering course because it had many of the characteristics of our hybrid courses. This course had 90 to 100 students each semester during our COVID teaching semesters. It had four programming assignments, three multiple choice quizzes, a multiple choice midterm. And then the focus of this course was really large software as a service projects with real customers, with teams of five to seven students primarily implemented with uh, Ruby on Rails, <clears throat> the software environment and deployed on the Heroku.com uh, platform as a service. So why were we teaching in hybrid? We needed to offer a face-to-face -face option <clears throat> for international students. They had to have at least one course that was face-to-face -face during COVID time. And that uh, at the same time, we needed a remote option for students who were isolating with COVID, they'd been exposed to COVID, they had COVID. And given the time they had to isolate, you can't it just treat it as a normal illness, they would fall too far behind in course. We also had social distancing in our classrooms. So typically we only used one third of a classroom capacity. And for the classrooms that we were using, that meant that you could only put half the students in class one day and half the other day for a two day a week class. And the students who were not in the class would then attend remotely. And for the lectures, we used Zoom. And then we would also record the, the Zoom lectures to the cloud. Now, the reality is only about 20% of the course attended face to face. About 60% of the course would attend live remotely. And about 20% watched the recorded Zoom lectures. At least we hope they watched them. We didn't have any way to record that except for the fact that they did well on their assignments. Why? Why was it that the, <clears throat> we set up a, I went to all the trouble to set up face to face courses, but the students, not that many attended face to face? Well, the reason was well, because of our capacity constraints in the classrooms, most of our classes were purely online. We only had some fraction of them as hybrid. And so for many students had only one hybrid course and they didn't want to come to campus just for one class. Our campus is very large. And so the, the travel time for students is significant just to come on campus or even go from one part of campus to another. So now it's still the case, the students who did attend face-to-face, -face, I surveyed them and they said that they learn better face-to-face. -face. They can more easily you know, ask questions of the instructor. Um, some of them only watched recorded lectures. And again, from surveying them, they had conflicts with the research or uh, work or the class time slot. Um, because of this constraint of students maybe isolating with COVID, we didn't have any sort of pop quizzes or any activities that would reward live attendance. And on top of that, in, the, in some of the semesters, there were students who were attending the class who were located in India and China because of travel restrictions. Now, the technology we're using in the class, um, the Canvas is the learning management system used by Texas A&M. We had just switched over from Blackboard to Canvas right before COVID started. Um, Piazza was frequently used for class discussions and it was kind of more, most flexible at that time of tools. And again, that was already in widespread use. Um, for team discussions, we use uh, Slack or and Discord, although some classes had made some use of those previously, it was relatively little use. Um, Quiz proctoring was a tremendous issue, and we'll come back to that. In, in this example course, we used the Respondus Lockdown Browser. And then, as I mentioned, we used Zoom for all of the live and, 
in cloud recording. And then we had a set of existing software engineering tools, including Pivotal Tracker, Trello, Amazon Web Services Cloud9, GitHub, Broku.com, and a variety of others, all of which were already web-based, which made the deployment in this course much easier than for courses that had software that had been specific to a laboratory and had to go with a uh, remote version. Now, as I mentioned, Canvas was already in use. Um, <clears throat> during the period of time we're talking about, the several semesters we're teaching with COVID, tremendous work was done by our academic innovation office to integrate in many other tools into the system, including Zoom, Respondus, the grade scope, for example, for helping with the, the grading process, and a large number of other tools specific to other courses. Um, we found the quiz facility worked very well for multiple choice questions. It's more advanced than what was available on Blackboard. Um, this particular example course used multiple choices because of the limited TA and greater resources. Other courses would use for quizzes could use short answers and then use the grade scope system to help in, auto, in sort of like with the, uh, the grading process. This course initially used Piazza, as I mentioned, for class discussions because it had been used in the past, but then it switched over to uh, Canvas discussion groups because Piazza changed their licensing model that made it not possible for us to use it anymore due to various legal concerns. Now, this was true not just in this particular course, but across campus that Piazza mostly went out of use. And the discussion groups, even before COVID, they were kind of had provided some help to the students discussing homeworks and projects, but during COVID, they really became <clears throat> the recitation that it was critical to monitor and respond very quickly to issues as they came up in these discussion groups, both by the instructor and the teaching assistant. So in fact, the teaching assistant, their primary duty <clears throat> was in terms of like monitoring the discussion groups. And this also helped minimize the need for Zoom office hours <clears throat> or for students to become face to face to ask questions. Now, Zoom, we all have experience using Zoom now. It has good interactivity up to five to 10 users. And so we still frequently use it for those kind of meetings. But it's very difficult when you have 100 users. And one reason is because <clears throat> the podium screen is in use by the PowerPoint slide. So you can't see any sort of like chat messages from the students. So the teaching assistant has to monitor that and then interrupt as appropriate to read out the chat so the instructor can answer. <clears throat> and the instructor can also answer questions uh, or the TA can answer questions on their own during the lecture. <clears throat> now the interactions are captured in the Zoom cloud recording and we use closed captioning because this helped international students, especially those who were remote in other countries. And that was all captured for later reference by the students. So the students in survey made use of those transcripts in order to help them better understand the lecture material. Um, the challenge was capturing the face-to-face -face interactions with students because the classrooms do not have microphones for the students. So the instructor has to be careful to repeat everything so that it appears on the transcripts. Uh, for team discussions, industry is already using Slack in, in, uh, for teams and also Discord, although it's mostly popular with gamers, many students want to use the Discord system for discussions of teams. And so typically uh, each team would have multiple channels on Slack or Discord associated with different aspects of their project. And the instructor and TA were part of these channels. Now we found the primary problem was when you have 16 teams in one class, the amount of traffic is very high and it goes almost 24 or seven. Um, and so 
paying attention to those so that the instructor and TA can answer questions from the teams was challenging. Now, most of our customers are non-technical here. And so they were not part of the, the channels, but uh, some customers had technical ability and they were part of the channels and that improved the interactions of the customers. But I, another problem was, of course, not all the communication was via Slack. Sometimes students had text messages, sometimes email. So tracking everything that is happening on each team was more challenging than when we had just daily uh, stand-up face-to-face meetings uh, by the team. Now, some teams were doing that uh, via Zoom, but uh, many teams were not. And so also GitHub became more critical for coordination of the software status because there was less verbal communication among team members. For the customers, some of the customers were local to College Station, Texas area, but others were spread across the US and for example, in uh, Portland, Oregon. Um, and so because of the COVID rules, we all the communication with the students was done remotely. Sometimes it was by teleconference, sometimes by Zoom. Um, and then, as I mentioned, sometimes using uh, Slack and of course, just email. Um, it, we found initially it was challenging for the non-technical customers to communicate because we're talking about building, you know, uh, interactive web-based applications. And Zoom interactions are more formal than face-to-face. -face. It's not as easy to share a screen and sketch on a tablet and the Zoom sketching tools are not very useful. Um, and just sort of the bandwidth available to between the customer and the, and the team is, is, uh, is less than it would be if everyone is in a conference room. Um, and in particular, it made it harder for the customers to understand demonstrations of the software that the students were giving um, you know, flipping back and forth from a full screen mode to sketching on a tablet or it, it, and then uh, to get sort of an idea of a user interface and then for the customer to be able to, to see that. Eventually, the teams and customers got good at, um, at interacting, but then of course it was the end of the class. For quizzes in the midterm, um, the Canvas quiz facility works well, so you can view the midterm as just a big quiz. Really, the huge challenge is proctoring of the exam. And remember, we had students that were outside the US as well. Um, the options that were offered by the, <clears throat> the university for proctoring included an on-campus proctoring center that was set up, which essentially had a large number of undergraduate students were paid to watch other students on Zoom. Um, but the restrictions of this system meant that it was only good for high stakes exams, like a final exam <clears throat> or a heavily weighted midterm. And the midterm in this class was not heavily weighted. There is an honor lock system, uh, commercial system that has pop in live proctors, but again, it's not suitable for uh, the quizzes, which are like 15 minutes long. So the system that we wound up using was to respond to lockdown browser and webcam monitoring because it's completely automated. And so it can easily be used for quizzes or so we thought. In fact, there were many problems with uh, proctoring. The first problem is networking. Um, that what's surprising, this was not the students remote in India and China, it was not their network problem. It was students that live in off-campus apartments that have free Wi-Fi that's not very good. And the respondent system is very, very sensitive to network issues in terms of particularly going through the initial process of authenticating this, their selves to the system before starting their quiz. Many students might take as long as 10 minutes to get into the quiz. And now, some students, the ones who were face-to-face, -face, chose to just take the quiz on their laptop in class, and those didn't have any problems. Um, another problem is webcam issues. The, the system needed good lighting to avoid triggering warnings, and some students had lighting so bad it looked like they were in a cave when you watched the video. Um, some students had laptops with broken webcams. They've been using the same laptop for years, and parts of it are broken. So they had to like, set up a cell phone as an alternate webcam to use with the system. And many of these issues were only discovered in the first quiz. 
Um, to summarize our experiences it, with this class and many others, the tools made tremendous progress during the semesters of hybrid teaching. The university very quickly stood up an academic innovation office that focused on providing the tools and the training to the faculty and the teaching assistants as fast as possible. Um, some things were just the commercial products got much better. For example, the breakout facility in Zoom went from really terrible to okay. Um, Canvas integration with other tools got much, much better during the, the semesters. And as I mentioned, the students and the customers would learn to communicate electronically with each other, not as efficient as face-to-face, -face, but it, in the end, we, they, the students did provide uh, software systems to the customers that the customers were happy with, which is really the bottom line in terms of the outcome. That uh, the students themselves already were quite good at communicating with each other electronically. Um, that the one drawback is that on a team, there's always the chance that some students are not doing their fair share of the work. And when you're not face-to-face, -face, it makes it easier for those students to hide. Um, really, I'd say about 90% of the headaches were related to exam proctoring because we went from proctoring uh, distance courses uh, for you know, students that are in industry for a relatively small number to suddenly having proctoring for uh, tens of thousands. And our College of Engineering is 23,000 students. So a very large increase in the amount of proctoring that we had to do. So it was a lot of scaling pains. Kind of summarize really what we learned here. We, we were doing emergency hybrid teaching, remember. This is not planned teaching. We switched over from face-to-face -face teaching to hybrid teaching in one week's time with the faculty working tremendously hard over that week to get everything quickly set up and then roll it out as uh, we went through the semesters. Um, we had some summertime in there that we could use to improve things as well, but really to provide a quality experience for students in a hybrid experience will require much more investment. In some ways, uh, distance only courses are easier because all of the interactions are managed through the system and because to a typical distance course, the number of students involved in it is small enough that the facilities and, and products like Zoom are already capable of handling it. But 100 students at a time is, uh, is uh, challenging. And of course, remember, we're talking graduate students in this example, but uh, for our undergraduate courses also have frequently classes of those uh, sizes. So in conclusion, that uh, we learned a tremendous amount uh, during COVID. And I, my hope is that we can apply this to uh, future courses, especially for our online offerings 